Welcome everyone to D60. Opening the program this morning is the director of DARPA, Dr. Stephen Walker. Thank you very much and welcome to D60. When first established in 1958, no one could have imagined the outsized impact DARPA would have on our world. Charged originally with missile defense, nuclear test detection, and taking back the gains the Soviets had won in space, DARPA, then ARPA, focused on the demands of the day. Indeed, it is astonishing that what we gather for here today was established with a page and a half charter written in vague bureaucratic style. The charter gave DARPA the responsibility to direct and perform certain advanced research and development projects with the primary mission of ensuring the United States would never again be surprised by another nation's technological achievement. Over the years, our mission has expanded to include creating as well as preventing technological surprise. And as most of us in this room are well aware, the technologies DARPA has developed have had a profound impact on our lives. Portable GPS receivers and voice recognition software commonly found on all our mobile devices, devices that now outnumber people on the planet. Unmanned aerial vehicles that routinely collect intelligence and conduct strike operations around the globe without putting American servicemen and women in harm's way. And of course, the ARPANET, leading to the internet, which has forever altered global communications and commerce. DARPA has an unrivaled past, and part of what D60 is about is celebrating those past contributions. Many of those contributions made by people right here in this room. But new DARPA research promises to have far-reaching value as well. From self-driving cars to humanoid robots, directed energy and artificial intelligence, to synthetic biology, distributed space architectures, hypersonics, and quantum sensing, the investments the agency is making today will be just as pivotal in delivering military and economic advantage to America far into this century. And that is really what DARPA D60 is about. Not the agency's well-chronicled past, but it's, our, but, it's, but it's future and our country's future. And how we, this community of DARPA people, performers and stakeholders, can put our talents to use in developing breakthrough technologies and capabilities for national security. <clears throat> DARPA's mission to develop breakthrough technologies and capabilities for national security has held steady for decades. But the world around DARPA has not remained constant. The world has seen some remarkable scientific and technological achievements that have the potential not only to ensure ongoing US military superiority, but also to catalyze societal and economic advances as well. At the same time, the world is experiencing significant technical, economic, and geopolitical shifts that pose real threats to US preeminence and world stability. These dueling trends of opportunity and jeopardy and how they affect US national security a decade or more from now will deeply inform our strategic priorities moving forward. Starting with the second trend first, DARPA sees the beginnings of some daunting challenges ahead. On the technology front, the nation faces the challenge of maintaining technological superiority in a world where advanced technology is now global. The, com the commodification and off-the-shelf availability of weapons technology, biological and chemical threat capabilities, and advanced microelectronics and cyber and space-related technologies represent a historic shift that raises the stakes for America. 
Among other implications, it drives home the point that advanced technology is necessary but no longer sufficient to maintain an advantage over a potential adversary. Just as important is the speed at which the United States can turn advanced technology, in many cases technology available to all, into real capability. Communications capabilities, too, have undergone radical democratization in recent years, making it exceedingly easy through social media and other channels to influence large populations of people. Moreover, while the still nascent synthetic biology and biotech fields remain specialized domains for now, the future could very well result in tools of genetic engineering being accessible to many, thus elevating concerns on the biodefense front. Challenges relevant to DARPA's work also loom on the economic and geopolitical fronts as well, at multiple scales. These include population shifts, such as urbanization in developing countries, religious and cultural differences, resource imbalances, including those involving energy and water, and the growing potential for fast-moving natural or man-made pandemics. Enormously complex forces, including new technologies, are driving these social, economic, and geopolitical trends. But technology, I believe, can also be part of the solution, helping to ensure that these trends do not undermine American stability. Indeed, a number of achievements with roots in DARPA research are opening new avenues for counterbalancing these trends and advancing U.S. national security in the years to come. In the military domain, advances in microelectronics and communications are making possible a degree of networked coordination and collaboration between different systems almost unimaginable just a few years ago. This, in turn, is enabling distributed system-of-systems architectures that will be more resilient to attack, less costly to develop, and faster to upgrade when compared to today's centralized, expensive, and overextended monolithic systems. Similarly, the rapid gains made in better understanding the human brain and in the decoding of genomic sequences are enabling advances such as prosthetics that actually give the sensation of touch. Machines that learn the same way that humans do. And therapeutics and vaccines that can be developed from scratch in 60 days or less from the discovery of a brand new virus. And in the digital arena, the application of autonomy and related advances in mathematics and computing hold out promise for overcoming the increasingly costly burden of cybersecurity using machine learning to protect our networks at machine speed. In order to make these technology breakthroughs, DARPA must continue to be highly adaptive and agile. Agile enough to anticipate threats, to find the brightest people operating in the most relevant areas of science and engineering, and to bring those people into DARPA to turn their ideas and their ideas of their research communities into technologies and capabilities that have, the pot, that have a positive outsized impact for America and our world. Only then can DARPA truly remain the global vanguard of bleeding edge science and technology, and only then can we continue to meet America's expectation of us that we invent the future first, a future where new technologies are used to improve our lives and keep us and our world secure. To meet this expectation, this high expectation, and to begin to provide a foundation for the next 60 years of innovation, I have asked DARPA to focus on four strategic imperatives. First, we must defend the nation against existential threats. That involves a wide variety of completely new capabilities from autonomous cybersecurity to weapons of mass destruction sensing, and defense against active bio threats, man-made or natural. In addition, because we know peer competitors have been developing hypersonic weapons to thwart our missile defenses, DARPA 
must understand and build counters to these capabilities. Second, DARPA will provide solutions to deter and prevail in large-scale conflicts against high-end adversaries. Deterring and prevailing against peer competitors in Europe, a stand-in scenario, and in Asia, a standoff scenario, will require new thinking. We need to disaggregate war fighting assets across all domains and focus on responsive options that enhance our lethality. Realizing new capabilities across the land, sea, and air domains will be important, but space and the electromagnetic spectrum will be just as important, if not more so, fighting away from our shores. Third, we have to focus on ways to effectively prosecute stabilization efforts. After more than 20 years, we are still fighting terrorist and insurgency movements worldwide. We need to do better. In particular, we need capabilities to address phase zero conflict and large-scale urban warfare, in addition to rigorous models built to better understand the societies we're engaged with. We also need to develop technologies that give our warfighters a significant performance advantage in these operating environments. Finally, underpinning all of the above strategies is the foundational research we pursue. We need to continue to win the important tech races of this century. Artificial intelligence, advanced microelectronics, synthetic biology, neurotechnology, new computing methodologies, and understanding social science better than we do today, to name just a few areas. We need to be the first to understand these new technologies, to inform our policymakers and warfighters on their potential use and or misuse, and then apply them in defense of our nation consistent with America's ethics and values. D60 is an opportunity for us to come together and honor DARPA's past accomplishments, strengthen and expand our relationships and partnerships with each other, and communicate to you, our performer community and stakeholders, how we intend to bring these four strategic imperatives into practice. So we've invited more than 100 speakers to participate in D60, and we'll have more than 20 hours of programming in which you will hear how the agency seeks to have a transformative impact in a diversity of areas. And so I'd like to highlight a few things that'll happen this week. There are gonna be six plenary sessions like this that focus on key agency initiatives developed in the last year. Each initiative was developed by a lead tech office and some are still, still very much in the making, so you have a chance to impact them. Give us your ideas and your inputs. These initiatives are titled Mosaic Warfare and Multi-Domain Battle, Electronics Resurgence, Achieving a Beneficent Cyber Future, Enterprise Disruption, BioNext, and Combating Emerging Weapons of Mass Destruction and Terror Threats. Plenary sessions will serve to inform and guide more detailed and rigorous discussion in the breakout sessions we have planned, almost 20 breakout sessions. In addition, there's an exhibit hall featuring displays that highlight a selection of programs reflecting the breadth of the agency's research portfolio and its extensive showcase of historical displays and artifacts from some of DARPA's most iconic programs. Thursday evening, Retired U.S. Navy four-star admiral and former commander of SOCOM, William H. McRaven, will provide a keynote address at our anniversary celebration dinner. This is the same Admiral McRaven of the famous Make Your Bed commencement speech in 2014 to the University of Texas. And he'll share with us how technology made an impact in his operations in the field. On the closing day of the symposium, we have several interesting presentations. I'm really looking forward to hearing from my boss, Dr. Michael Griffin, the Under Secretary of Defense for Research and Engineering. Since his confirmation, Mike has charged the defense research community to deliver on several fronts, from directed energy and hypersonics to machine learning, cybersecurity, and advanced electronics. In his remarks, he will lay out his technology priorities for the department, 
and where he wants to take the department in these key areas. So you won't want to miss that. And then finally, I will close out the symposium with an announcement of a major new DARPA initiative in artificial intelligence. You will have to stay to the very end <laughs> to get the details of where DARPA is headed in this very important field. So over the next three days, you will hear a lot about DARPA's contributions to national security. Over the last 60 years, our focus on new warfighting constructs to include distributed architectures and the new technologies that will enable those architectures, and our need to turn technology into capability at a much faster pace for our U.S. and our allied warfighters. None of what we want to accomplish moving forward will be impossible without you. Without the backing of the broader scientific and technological community, our warfighters and our performers, DARPA ideas are just that, ideas. You are what makes the impossible possible, making our ideas real and delivering for our nation. In the end, after three days of thought-provoking talks, discussion and debate, you and I are going to be completely and utterly energized. Energized by conversations, I'm going to be a little tired, but we'll all be energized. Energized by conversations with old friends and new ones. Energized by creative thought and a sense of wonder about what these new technologies posit for our world. And energized by renewed appreciation for what DARPA and you have done together over the years and what we're going to do together moving forward. Events like D60 are about honoring our past, celebrating our present, and charting our course for the future. A course that will ensure DARPA and the United States of America continue to create breakthrough technologies and capabilities that change our world. Thank you. <laughs>